differently. And then you can also pin your uh, kind of your image so that it's always on top. Okay. So then you will help. Okay. So we fix this. Andrei, uh, whose picture do you see on on the on the screen now? You should probably pin your video so that it's it's enlarged. So how can I see only my video? Well, you look at the view where there are all the pictures, you look at yours and there are these three dots, you click on them and then there's the pin button. Okay. 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 So, so had, had I started recording? Yes. Okay, good. So you know only those who come to the very beginning and use the secret knowledge, okay? The rest are getting it from the recording without comments. So what I'm going to talk today? I'm going to talk about, so I'll start with reviewing. Permutativity, oriented associativity, and WDVV equations. Then, I'll try to explain how to go from commutativity to oriented associativity. I don't like this. Then I'd like to explain the Hodge string construction of basically Lossif and Shadrin. Without descendants. And number four, I'll try to, expl to explain why why it is BCOV. Okay, so that's uh, that's the plan for today. You said without descendants and wrote with with the descendants. Ah, without. So Brief reminder of two dimensional stories. So there is a loss of money in space. that contains white points and black points. 
and uh, pasteurization is like this. And one of the point, one of the white points is coming, is called incoming point, and another is coming outgoing point. And uh, the main object I is the following. We associate V to white point W to black point and to such thing associate I that belongs to W to the power M times endomorphisms of V times differential forms on this space. This is L M or L M M. Okay. So there can be several white points, but only one of them is outgoing, or what is the rule? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, this thing can have a generalization, and generalization is. is the following several white points several black points and uh, <coughs> these it's these spaces that are called lots of mind spaces so however it, it, uh, is, a, it is a surface of, of with the genus or so, uh, it's so a, here it's without a genus but you can also make a genus but the white points are on the boundary or not on the boundary? It's the pictures. So, are... it's, so, it is, so there is no boundary. No boundary. Mm -hmm. So to show that it, that it has no boundary and that it's not a disk, I'll write down this diameter. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not a disk. Okay. It's actually a cylinder. So uh, these things, as far as I understand, these things are important uh, in proving something. However, these things are important in getting formulas. So, uh, so I consider this and the uh, equation is that When there is a factorization, I of this is a product. And product is taken, of course, in endomorphisms of V. I put here V. So it's uh, very simple. And <clears throat> so when you write uh, that, that, you mean that, that uh, LM is a stratified space. And when you go to the stratum, then you have that. Sorry? You mean that uh, that LM is a stratified space and when you when you go to the stratum... Yes, exactly. It's, it's a stratified space and uh, it is not a boundary. 
this has real codimension one, real codimension two, it is complex codimension one. And if you study cohomological condition for this, you may get the following thing. You may consider object that I call tau. Tau is an integral over LMN of I. And uh, I would like to consider this tau as a function on W. Okay, and since it's a function from W to endomorphism of, of, of V, I can write it tau as T1 Tk, where T's, T's are coordinates on V, on uh, W. Actually, this thing defined for n greater or equal than one. Because we need to have at least one black point here. And the equation are d tau for over dti, d tau over dtj equals the same thing where i and j interchange. And composition is, of course, composition in endomorphisms. So that's why this equation is called commutativity. Because it says that uh, first derivative commute. Now it's interesting to play with this equation a bit. In order to, to play uh, with this equation, we will see that uh, this equation is equivalent to the following equations. Consider d tau, that is d t i, d tau or d t i. Then this equation is equivalent to equation d tau wedge d tau equal to zero. And of course, wedge in composition. Composition, once again, in endomorphism of V. Now, this equation, in turn, is equivalent to the following equation. 
sorry, I, I didn't understand this equation. Does it have anything to do with factorization uh, across the white points or not? Of course. But, but uh, this differentiation with respect to T's is more about inserting black points. Yes. However, composition is, is with respect to white points. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let me show the first equation. You see, there are several equations. Mm -hmm. First equation is white point, white point. Here I have point number one, point number two. Okay. So this, mm -hmm. this is the space LM2. This, uh, so on the, on the space LM2, I can take point one towards the entrance. And then I will get one, two. Or I can take point one toward the exit. And then I'll get two, one. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so going from the, from entrance, when point one goes from entrance to exit, it's homotopy. Yes. If, uh, if omega is closed, I just say that these two equal to each other. And this is the first equation here. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you can put a point three here. One, two, three. So you get one, three, two, plus one, two, three. So point three could be anywhere here. Mm -hmm. This equals to point one and two interchanged. And that's how we get all these equations. So it's actually very simple. Mm -hmm. And it is similar uh, to the way how you get so-called Kiel's relations in uh, modular space of complex structures. Now, I want to rewrite this equation, d tau, d tau equal to zero. Let me rewrite them in the following way. Zd plus a, or maybe, I don't remember the power right now, squares to zero. It's a flat connection with spectral parameter, okay? From this I get dA equals to zero and also A squared equals to zero because I have spectral parameter here, okay? So from this I get that A is d tau, and from this I get d tau, d tau equal to zero. So it's just that simple. Nothing mysterious. Now,
Now let me recall what are the oriented WDVV. I thought oriented WDVV were also introduced in our joint paper with money. At least I, ha I haven't seen any reference to it. So this was about white points that are, that are inputs and one point as an output. So this object belongs to V tensor M maps to V times differential forms on M not M plus one. So inputs and outputs. And once again, it's not a disk. It's not a disk. And factorization is clear. I think it's clear what, what, what does it mean? It means that uh, to plug this here on the boundary, that I corresponding to this factorization, to, to this degeneration gives you factorization. And here we have an, an output and here we have an input and many other inputs here. <clears throat> so I, I'll erase this. So Rekeel's relation on the moduli space could be rephrased in the following way. Of course, I'll integrate all of the moduli space here. And I'll understand this V tensor M to V, of course, as a vector field. On V. And these are, and these as its uh, Taylor components. So I need to give some other name to this vector field. So let it be vector field V small on V, okay? Then, if, let me call them T capital, are coordinates on V. We will have the following equations. V2, VA over DT, B, DTC structure constants of commutative associative algebra. So it's commutative because here are partial, partial derivatives that commute. 
a non-trivial condition is associativity. So, last time I told that it is this equation should be called associativity. Because it's only associativity here. But uh, historical names are, are mostly wrong, you know? <laughs> so people called associativity what should be called the cyclic associativity. That's why this equation we call oriented associativity. Now, let me write it as an equation. A, B, T, what C, D, E. So what can I interchange, like B and B? Let me have a look, and let me compare this equation with this equation. Here is sum over C. Here is sum over C. You see, these two equations look pretty similar. The only difference is that tau here has the two types of inputs. Like C, A, I1, IK, IK. While we here have a single type of input. A1, AK, A, okay, let me put here AB. You see, it was amazing. Uh, you see, I was expected that once I will write down uh, some equations in my life, but I never thought that I will deal with such universal equations, okay? Because these equations have no parameters. So the only difference between this and this is that here all, all inputs are the same and here inputs are colored by two colors. So it is actually a universal equation. Okay. And then the question is how to connect these two? So there is one way to connect them. It's just to say that uh, <coughs> If I, if I consider white as black, I will get a solution. So, there is a clear map. 
that take solution to oriented associativity to commutativity. Just identify uh, spaces W and V, and you will get it. However, how to go in an opposite direction? First of all, of course, we need the spaces to be of the same dimension, V and W. And then, let me make a following remark. Commutativity equation is invariant under diffeomorphisms of the of the space W. You see differential forms, while associativity oriented associativity equations are not invariant. Second derivative are, are not invariant. So it means that in order to go from this to this, it is better to get special coordinates, OK? Idea is to look here, pick up special coordinates, and hope that in special coordinates, you will get a solution. Mm -hmm. So how to find this special coordinate? You may think that it is a pretty serious problem. However, what you know? that if you take a proper coordinates, then you should have a symmetry between I and C. OK? So you actually want tau AC to be the derivative of tau with respect to some special coordinate C. OK? Uh, that's what you want. It's a desire. So would you, would you have this? Then in coordinates TC, everything would work. This actually means the following, that this could be written in the following form, d tau ab dtb equals to zero. So these are equations for special coordinates. Tau is a function of T small. So idea is to solve this equation and then express small tau in terms of T capital. And the question is, how to solve this equation? The answer is pretty simple. There is an easy solution to this equation. Just note that d tau squares to zero. You see, this also has a meaning that d tau is a differential, right? So it would mean that exact thing would go. We are not studying cohomology, after all. 
So, it would be great to find d tau b in the form d tau b c times something. And uh, it is easy to check that if I take here constants, it solves this equation. So from this formula, it follows that tau b is tau bc hc. So this is formula for special coordinates. You see, the answer is that simple. So special coordinates are governed by the same equation. So you would not believe it, but it's like this. So, The only condition should be condition is that uh, this these should be really a coordinate. And not some uh, the generate function. So the condition for this to be coordinates is the non-degeneracy of this matrix. So these are coordinates Tau B R coordinates if D I Tau B C H C has maximal rank. And this is exactly the primitivity condition that your society implied. Remember that he, maybe somebody knows, at least somebody heard that he is speaking about primitive form, primitive form. So primitive means that you cannot take any age. You need to take such age that this has a maximal rank. So uh, this, so so what I explain here looks as a formal geometry that can that constructs solution to oriented associativity equation from commutativity equation. But you may also ask, what about the standard WDV equations.
I need to erase something. Tender WDV equation. They could be rephrased in the following way. This vector field is potential. So this is a constant metric. Then you may ask how to get standard WDV equation from the construction I described. Let me give you the result. It's very simple. Tau AB condition. Tau AB should be symmetric with respect to eta AB. So whenever we have a symmetric solution, when you have this constant metric, you can put index down and interchange. When you have a symmetric sol solution, you get a standard solution to WDV. So that's how it should be treated, treated, okay? Because before I go further, let me say something about this commutativity, commutativity equation. Actually, this commutativity equation could be generalized in an interesting way. Remember, I told you the equation of the following form. Where I said that A is a one form. You may wonder why one form? I could put here any form and study this equation. You may ask, does it make any sense to consider here not a one form, but an N form? And surprisingly, answer would be yes. And let me explain this. Not only the answer would be yes, it has some geometrical meaning. And when we will try to guess this meaning, we will go beyond the LM spaces. So let me go, let me come to this original picture where we have a circle, where we have point. And you have coordinate T here and small phi here. And when you were writing things like this, operator phi, I'll write it for two points, e to the t2 minus t1 h or l0. Okay, I'll write it l0 plus e to the i phi 
phi two minus phi one. L not minus. So this is standard evolution. To go from one point to another point, you need to ro rotate and shift. This is for shift, this is for rotation. And there are also two other terms. DT2 minus DT1 multiplied by G naught plus exponent D phi two minus D phi one multiplied by G naught minus. So this long guy is the, you may call it super propagator. or super evolution. The loop space. Here you rotate the loop, here you evaluate. And here uh, it becomes a differential form. Now, what you do next? At some moment, you'd like to integrate. You'd like to integrate over position of T2 and the angle T, uh, and phi 2. So in order to integrate, you need to take this exponent down. So let me let me take down this exponent and put here one plus d phi two minus d phi one d phi one times g naught minus. Now let me restrict to the space of uh, states that is invariant under rotation. So I'd like to erase this. So it is condition L not minus applying to each state equals to zero. So that's what I have. Now I see that uh, I have the differential form of several types. I have a differential form that is a one form in the phi two direction. And also a function in phi two direction. You see, to tell the truth, I need to say that uh, Okay, if I go from the left to the right, then this would be two, this would be one, and I can take this here, of course. And here I have some, I, I'll have something like phi three, and I will also get something like one plus d phi three minus d phi two, g not minus. So if I combine, differential forms corresponding to point two, I will see that I have phi two one plus dt two something. Okay, I, let me put it this way. I will have phi two I will have phi two 
G not plus DT2. I will have I2 G not minus I2 D phi 2. And I will also have G not plus G not minus phi 2 D T2 D phi 2. So this would correspond to zero observable. This would correspond to one observable in horizontal in T direction. This would correspond to one observable in the vertical direction. And this would correspond to two observable. So, when I expand the super propagator, I'll get something like generating function for all of these observables. So, I will do the following. <clears throat> I would always like to integrate everything but one observable in this direction, just like I did in Morse theory. However, however, I have interesting thing. I have this observable and this observable. They differ differ by one in parity. So, I would like to do the following. I would like to consider this guy with parameter that I'll call Ti, and I would like to consider this guy with parameter theta i. And I would like to integrate over d phi 2. So all together, This two-dimensional story is one-dimensional story, where here I have either phi or g not minus phi. And they attach to this phi theta i and I attach to this phi ti. Or, in other terms, I'd like to deform q with theta i 
phi i plus t i g not minus phi i. So this is the difference between the one dimensional theory and the loop theory. In the loop theory, I have two related operators, phi and g not minus phi. Recall that previously I was studied the following equation N A B of T square to zero. It was the Morse equation. Now I go from T to Ti and theta. I. So in one dimensional theory, I would get equation of the following form. A, B, M, B, C, T, e, theta. Equal to zero. Now, let me do a tricky thing. Let me define an operator. The ramp, that is theta i d over d t i. So you can see that now this ends that in Morse theory, or in quantum mechanic were just functions now become differential forms. Okay. And I have this thing that is almost commutativity. The only thing that I need to add here is the closeness. Where does this come from? But this, of course, comes from the fact that uh, that's this deformation is what? It is D plus G not minus exact. And from this, and from the fact that G not minus annihilates vacuum state, this equation follows. So actually, we really get n square equal to zero dn equals to zero. So for n being one form, we get k 
que é metatímica. Really? One for means that you have only one theta, and theta comes together with phi, and phi is the only observable that is not integrated over angle. Actually, we have n points and n minus one integrations. So one of the point is not integrated. That's why it is a one form. However, it would be interesting to see what would be a geometrical meaning of another of other components of this differential form. And they have a meaning. It means that if you have higher forms, you would like to consider observables that are not integrated. So what does it mean that are not integrated along the angle, of course? It means that, are, that they are integrated only along the line. So in particular, two form corresponds to the following problem. One point goes somewhere and another form is not integrated along the line. It means that it goes along this line. So this is new type of enumerative problem. So I had not studied them, honestly. I had not studied them, but uh, would I study them? I will get, uh, I already have equations. And these equations are this equation. So if somebody would like to study them, they, will, they already have it. Okay, and at this moment, I'd like to make a break. Pasha? Uh, yes. It's a time for a break. Oh, well, good. Well, you, you, you're, the, you're the host, you're in charge. Ah, no, no, you see, the, the host could not be a policeman at the same time. Well, no, today you are the policeman. Okay, uh, so as, as a policeman and the host, I declare the five minutes break. You are all the branches of power today. Okay.
Okay. So I'll try to continue. Okay. So since it's the eve of a new year, I'd like to be short in the next step, but I will give myself a present. Okay. And the present would be that I'll publish two ideas from the list in the very beginning at the end of this talk today. Okay? Because uh, these ideas are important and I actually want to have an official record that I had it in the year 2020 and not in the year 2021. Okay? So in this way, uh, ah, Pasha, I'll be not only host, not only policeman, but uh, also not only presenter, but I'll be also a corruptioner, okay? So corruptioner is somebody who uses uh, his uh, duty to persuade his uh, personal interests, right? Okay? So my official position is uh, is a speaker, okay? And I am supposed to speak about this only. But I'd like to, to make a corruption, New Year corruption, okay? Very good. And you could not imagine Russia without a corruption. And since I'm Russian, you see, I'll do the scientific corruption. Okay, but before I go to corruption, I'd like to tell you the following. So there were commutativity equation, and that's how we can construct the solution in constructive way. Okay, now. How to get solutions to WDV equation? Can we do it in the similar way? Because you see, these manipulations with uh, time changes were not very eliminated, eliminating, okay? They were just formulas. However, there are constructions behind the formulas. And they go as follows. Consider what we called Hodge. String theory. That is something that I invented in the year in the last century. Or 98. So I published uh, a paper called Hot String Theory. 
and two HSIta primitive form. So it is last century tool. <clears throat> but in the modern language, we studied it with Shadrin. In this century. And we assume that we have the following set of data. Consider that there is a space U. No, I don't like U. So we called it V, but V is already occupied. Okay, space S, vector space. Such that it is a bicomplex. And I call differentials Q and G not minus. Two differentials. So you see, I need, anyway, I need this to construct commutativity equation. So then, a second piece, I, piece of data. I need multiplication. Multiplication. on S. It is a map. That I'll call M. So what I want about this multiplication, I want this to be commutative. And associative. Point to be you should differentiate M. So it would mean that Q is the first order differential operator. Point to C. Now, what about G not minus? G not minus should be second order differential operator. So you know what does it mean to be second order differential operator? It means that its commutator with the multiplication is the first order differential operator. It means that I have G not minus. It's an operator. And here I have multiplication. So here I have M2. So there is an operator that's called multiplication by S. By S1. So if this is a second order, then if I commute, I'll get the first order.
And first order operator uh, means that uh, it satisfies Leibniz again. Mm. So let me motivate motivation from the string. You have observables. You have J current of Q. And you have multiplication, means that you are putting points together. So Q acting on this. goes into this. This is the motivation of the Leibniz identity for Q. Now, what is G not minus? G not minus is supposed to be an operation of uh, a rotation of local coordinate and actually substitution of this operation. So in any case, G not, in any case, there, there should be an energy momentum tensor and it should be Q of G Z Z. So I can take G Z Z multiplied by vector Z and integrate. And you may see that when I change the contour, since this is not a constant, but a vector like Z, you'll get not the first, but the second order differential operator. You may check, it gives second order differential operator. Because of Z standing here, while Q is integral of J and no Z standing here. And here is a linear Z. But this, but this is axiomatic, okay? And the last thing, that I need here. Is the decomposition of S that would be a cyclic complex plus V. where I assume that A is a free module over Q and G not minus. So not only it's a cyclic, it's also free with respect to G not minus. So E is a span of elements of the following form. Some E, Q E, G not minus E, Q G not minus E. And 
And also I'd like to claim that G not minus annihilates V. So these are my conditions. So each of the condition is pretty natural, but I am putting all them together. This is the homological condition on how, how S uh, acts with respect to Q and G not minus. Second, there was condition on about multiplication. And then how this multiplication is related to these operations. So actually it's because there are several operations acting on S, M2, G not minus, and also uh, Q. So this is a story about three operations. This one, this one, and this one. Okay. So previously we studied these two operations. Now we add third one. Let me assume that Q on V equals to G naught on V equals to zero. So these V are cohomology. Cohomology. And I would like to do what? I would like to take this M2 to cohomology. So previously I told you how to do it without G not minus. So how to do it without uh, circle action. Now we will do it together with G not minus. Because after all, we are assumed to do string theory. And if there is something that we think we know about, at least closed string, that it is a loop. And since it's a loop, we can uh, rotate it, okay? So if we can rotate it, then there is such an object, G dot minus. And we should not restrict ourselves only with Q and M2, but also Q and 2 and G dot minus. And the axioms uh, that we impose are like this. Later it turned down that you can soften these axioms, but I prefer to work on this strict condition. So this is very reminiscent of uh, topological conformal field theory, right? Or n equal to CFT. C -C. Or... U M2 G not minus. Yes, just the space of states. So, uh, so if you if you forget about G not minus, you can see that it's like Chern Simons. But here it's not just Chern Simons, it's about a point. Or Chern Simons is about the string, open string. No, I'm not talking about Chern Simons, I'm talking about uh, two dimensional, uh, well, either n equal to. A CFT or topological of CFT. Of course, of course. It, it, mm -hmm. Of course, it's come, it comes out of this. I told you that motivation is coming out of this. Mm -hmm. So two-dimensional conformal theory just uh, shows you how to get this G naught minus and Q. And, uh, but uh, in two-dimensional theory, you have a lot of other stuff. And here we concentrate only on this. Mm -hmm. Now, statement. Consider the following tree. That is exactly the same tree, tree volume tree. That we used when we studied what? Uh, 
function. So I put here I of what? I of V. Inclusion of V to the leaves. Oriented tree. And here is pi to V. We studied such trees already when we studied the uh, induction of uh, infinity structures. So here, uh, this would be induction of infinity structure. However, here, what I have to put here, homotopy times g not minus. Now I hope you are not surprised when you see homotopy times g not minus. Homotopy that takes q e naught to e naught, it takes q g naught minus e naught to g naught minus e naught. This homotopy. You are not surprised that we are taking this homotopy because just half an hour ago I was telling you about this propagator. And when you integrate over t, you get g naught plus over L naught plus, and this is homotopy. And when you integrate over phi, you get G naught minus. So actually G naught plus, G naught minus, L naught plus, it's a something that you know from string theory. Come together in, the, in this form. So there is lots of Schrodinger theorem. Such sum solves oriented associativity equation. And once again, there are several ways to prove it. You can just plug things in and make operation with graphs. Okay? Because you know relations. It's a purely algebraic manipulation with graphs. So, would there be a computer program that would allow to make manipulation with graphs? So it would, be, it would mean computer program for computation in non-associative algebras, okay? In such case, uh, you can run it on the computer and we'll, you'll see that answer is, is, that, is, that, is it has to be. And uh, several talks ago, I told you how to run down this computation in the simplest possible case. That is by complex. Now, you might try to see, is there a more intelligent way to do it? 
and more intelligent way to do it is the following. At least, at least let me show you something. More intelligent way to do it is as follows. You see, I am talking from Russia, okay? And in Russia, we have no democracy. So there was democracy, but we kind of ruined it. Okay? And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So, all these inputs are similar, right? But let me choose a president, namely this guy. He would be a president. Then there is a preferred path. From the president to the output, okay? And I can rearrange all these trees in the following form. M2. And here is something. Here I'll get this. H G not minus M2. Here is something. So this is somehow the path of the president from the beginning to the end. Okay. I need to explain what are these boxes, okay? These boxes are full of something. These boxes are full of trees, okay? So if you look what comes out here, you would see the simplest case. So I am explaining the box. And here is M2 equals. First, you can have another guy standing here. So then, you can have the following propagator and this thing. Plus etc. And I combine all this in a box. Then I see that I have exactly loss of mining setup for very special operator phi. That is, you insert the box as a first argument. So now I am not surprised that uh, the tail gets here commutativity, commutativity equation for this phi. Okay? However, this phi also depends in a very special way. And this dependence of on of phi on V, like this, is a very special parameterization of phi. And it corresponds to T 
in terms of T capital. So just algebraic manipulations that I explained to you as kind of uh, tricks with partial differential equations, yes, become quite natural. I mean, how to get these special coordinates, why they are given through the same structure, because it's this. So, if you would like to prove something, first you prove commutativity here, then you prove that corresponding fine solves mauer cartan equation, Q phi plus, I thought it's G dot minus M2 phi phi. And then you get both. You get uh, commutativity equation and special coordinates. And special co coordinates, of course, restore restore what? They restore democracy. The way how we parameterize this phi. You parameterize it exactly this way. It's a special parameterization of phi that restores democracy. And this is the meaning of special coordinates. You just need to think about it. How you break democracy, and then you restore, restore democracy back. And it's a special coordinate they do, that do it. So this, so uh, this is interesting thing. This is how uh, moduli spaces, homolo and homolo homological algebra are playing together. It's kind of instructive to do it uh, in the first terms, and that's how you get this equation. Moreover. It turns out that you can also consider loops. And if you consider loops, you will get uh, equations uh, that you know in string theory. However, there are some interesting uh, modification. Interesting modification is how G naught minus behaves with respect to the twist. But uh, let me postpone it for the coming year, okay? So issues about loops, I would like to postpone for the second year. And here I described you the classical theory. And this theory is exactly what people are calling BCOV theory. Now, somebody, you see, I'm a bit, uh, you see, I don't see a lot of Chinese participants here. So I'd like to postpone discussion of uh, mirror expression until somebody from Chinese side would come. Okay. And also, uh, it is kind of the new year, yes? So everybody are both busy and celebrating. So I'll make my Russian corruption thing, okay? Now there'll be some corruption.
who thinks not directly related. To the main topic. Thing number one is called S duality. So the question was what is S duality? Something strange. In quantum takes momenta into wrapping. Oh my goodness. Takes gauge group into Langlands dual. Not understandable. So let me make a proposal. Ah, also, it takes coupling constant into inverse coupling constant. So standard uh, treatment of this S duality is that S duality in interacting theory could be understood only using M theory. Huh? So Edward Witten derived this S duality derived from geometric symmetric uh, from geometrical symmetry of M theory. Okay, not only Edward Witten, other people. Huh? So you may think that S duality is something that you will never be able to understand. S duality is something that. interchanges D brains and strings. So D brains are objects and strings are morphisms. How to interchange them? What does it mean? Okay. Complete mystery. Now proposal. Consider cohomology of epsilon one d one plus epsilon two d two for a bi complex. There are two ways to compute them. Way one. First, compute cohomology of D1. What does it mean? It means that we divide by epsilon one and consider epsilon one, two over epsilon one as being small. Okay? So we compute cohomology of D1 and treat D2 perturbatively. With coupling E2 over E1. So D2 with this coupling acts on cohomology of D1. Way two.
start with cohomology of D2 and treat D1 perturbatively. So you consider H of D2 with the action of D1 epsilon 1 over epsilon 2. So new coupling constant is one over the first coupling constant. Huh? Moreover, this HD1 and HD2 may be very different. They could re resemble, represent very different structure. You just need them to be compatible. And interpretation of this cohomology, you have this characteristic feature of S duality. Coupling constant is inverted. But altogether, they compute the cohomology of this linear combination. So the claim is that this is a universal explanation of S duality and related phenomena. So you do not need to have M theory, super strings, super young mills, leg lengths, nothing. It is a phenomena of homological algebra. And what I'm planning to do in the following year is to, is to study some uh, examples of this. So in this way, S duality should be demystified completely. Okay? So this is corruption number one, okay? I want to put it on the net. Now, second corruption, okay? Second element of corruption. new approach to Jacobian conjecture. So once again, Jacobian conjecture says that if you have a polynomial map from CN to CN, Then, if DFI of a DZJ, if determinant equals to one, it is polynomially invertible. So the approach that I propose is the following. Put this problem inside the problem of maps. So now let us consider, say, case n equals two from, so it's not only C2 to C2, it's a question of a maps between toric varieties. So 
So what we so what we study here is the holomorphic maps of toric varieties. However, here it's a toric variety of the special type, and here it's also a toric variety of the special type. We will never get understanding of this thing alone. The only way to get understanding of this is to study actually the map of toric variety. That is two-dimensional to toric variety. That is d-dimensional. So after you make a complete theory of uh, holomorphic maps of toric variety, toric varieties, just like we did for maps first from CP1 to toric. Then uh, Jacobian conjecture would be just a particular question there. And uh, it is exactly a reason why Jacobian conjecture was not proven yet. It's because it's not uh, a conjecture itself. It's just a small piece of the full machinery of holomorphic maps of toric varieties to toric varieties that should be governed by higher dimensional generalization of WDVV equation. Okay? So that's, we, that's what we should do. It's another reason to study things that I proposed. Start, study holomorphic map of toric varieties into toric varieties. Write down equations with spectral parameter with two of them for the case of C2. Consider very special equation. Only having all this machinery you would be able to prove this Jacobian conjecture. So Jacobian conjecture is almost like one million, one million US dollar price, as you know. It's one of the most famous conjectures. And here I am, I am giving you a path how to do it. And the reason why, once again, the reason why it was not proven yet is because formulated in this way, it's very particular topic in the subject. And I'm still planning to study this. And you know how to study this. C square is not C square. It's actually C star square that maps to C star to the power M. And then you compactify here, you compactify here. You study this relative theory. And of course, you not only study C star to the square, C star to the M, you of course study C star to the M, C star to the M. That's an object of study with compactifications here and here. Hmm. 
You know, I always uh, refer to uh, literature. Unfortunately, I cannot refer to Eastern literature. I refer to Western literature. In Western literature, uh, there are a lot of stories about pirates. And you know that pirates are people uh, who are looking for gold. And what's interesting is that when they capture gold, they, don't, uh, they, they have no way to spend it because they are not legal. So they are always hiding the gold in some coffins on some islands, okay? So it inevitably comes uh, that uh, people, one people are hiding gold in the coffin, other people are looking for this coffin, okay? So sometimes it happens that uh, some man knows where the coffin is. So he comes somewhere and says, oh, I know a map. I have a map. I know that the coffin is on that particular island under that particular tree. So then he goes to the, <laughs> I would say, analog of cafeteria. I don't remember how it was called <laughs> in the ancient England. So Englishmen were these pirates. And says, oh, you know, I know the map. The gold is here. I just uh, need to make a, a team. Let us go there, okay? So I am uh, acting exactly like this person who knows the map, where the gold is. I just need to get a ship, to get a team, and we'll go there. And the gold here is Jacobian conjecture. So maybe somebody would pay one million US dollars for it. So the gold is here. By the way, nobody cares about uh, uh, this amount of money. People care about uh, their permanent positions, you know? <laughs> it's also money, but uh, and it's more money, by the way. It's like, uh, so in 10 years, you'll get this 1 million. So in 30 years, you'll get 3 million, okay? So, okay, who is going to go with me to Jacobian conjecture? They are welcome, okay? I will not even be the captain. I'll be a person who has a map, okay? So Pasha knows it. Pasha? Yes. So you have read to your child the Treasury Island book? Yes. Quite recently? Yes. So you see here is a treasury, treasury Island story in the real life. Yeah, but you know when when they when they come to the to the place there, there's no gold. Yes, of course I know. That's a bad metaphor. Okay, but still they, they got something because they found the gold in nearby place. So, well, they 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 got a nice sort of jog on the way there. Oh, yes. Okay. So the, 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 they had some. Uh, I would call it animation along the way. Yes, animation. <laughs> so it was kind of animation. Uh, okay. And maybe cafeteria called Traktir. I think it's Traktir, yeah. Yes, Traktir, but it is not yeah. Traktir. Taverna. In Russian, it's Taverna. called Taverna. Taverna in English. Taverna, Taverna. yeah. Maybe Taverna, Taverna yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. So Taverna is a place where there were sailors without captain that were just drinking, waiting for adventure. Okay, so I, I'm kind of going to the World Tavern, okay? Full of people who want adventures, who want to be rich, okay? Who want to prove Jacobi conjecture. 
Kansevich failed. Kansevich wanted to prove it starting from 1988. I know it. So Kansevich failed to prove it for, for 32 years. And it is known that nobody could beat Kansevich. Okay. So people are thinking about this Jacobian conjecture for many years and going crazy, you know? So, uh, so I have this idea, okay? By the way, it would be possible to, to find the tropical version of Jacobian conjecture and to check if it's true or not. It looks a little bit like going to the island, but uh, refuse to dig. It's, uh, it's also a good point. So would be interested, you see, that in order to look for Jacobian conjecture, you, you, you will have to make a higher dimensional generalization of uh, conformal field theories. Huh? People would like it. But it's exactly because higher dimensional generalization of uh, is uh, of uh, holomorphic maps from CP1 is of course higher dimensional version of conformal field theory. Mm -hmm. So this Jacobian conjecture should come as a byproduct. You see, people would like it because. Uh, it, it would mean that it's not uh, a coffin with gold. It is kind of a gold mine. This is a, that it's even more important. And the proof that it is a gold mine, I would propose to pick up Jacobian conjectures and people would be interested. They'll wake up a bit. Hmm? Okay, so that's what, that's what I wanted to announce in the corruption section, okay, of my talk. So thank you everybody who survived until this moment, okay? Thank you. Now I need to, to stop recording and uh, I hope that it would go. So how? And I hope that it will go proper. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I... I